Uranium's the type to do a half-assed job during the day and spend every night doing Jaeger bombs and blasting Kendrick Lamar. You know the type. <laughs> I am Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Today we're going to be looking at a video called Why Thorium Rocks by the Sam Onella Academy. That is a fun name. Let's check it out. Hey kids, can I tell you a secret? Come here. Closer. Nuclear energy? It's not a bad thing. Sure. It's a great thing. It's a wonderful thing. <laughs> Years ago, things like... I love, I love this little artwork, uh, Three Mile Island, the little cooling towers, and Chernobyl with the Toys R Us are minor detail. Uh, Three Mile Island actually happened in 1979, but sure, I get what I get the premise. <laughs> Chernobyl and Three Mile Island were certainly something to worry about. Today, however, it's a different story. Let me tell you kids about thorium. Thorium, thorium is uranium's neighbor. Just did he? Yep, uh, so uranium, um, mailbox 92, with thorium being 90. That's a reference to the periodic table, atomic numbers. That's, that's pretty good, I like that. Two houses down. He's a lot like uranium, just he's a lot more chill. Uranium's <laughs> the type to do a half-assed job during the day and spend every night doing Jaeger bombs and blasting Kendrick Lamar. You know the type. <laughs> well, Kendrick Lamar is going to date this video, but... <laughs> That's pretty good. Thorium, on the other hand, is more career-oriented. And at the end of the day, he's cool with just watching Netflix, eating Ben and Jerry's. Let me walk you... I prefer Bluebell myself, but I get it. <laughs> ...through all the steps of nuclear power, and you'll see why thorium is so great. Let's start with mining. So when somebody doesn't feel like getting out... Now that's interesting. He's going to start with mining. Very few people that talk about nuclear talk about this dirty aspect of the job. That's... Just mining. It's dirty like mining anything else. Let's see what he says. This is cool. Bed, they'll, you know, whine and moan and roll over. Likewise, when uranium doesn't want to get out of bed, he releases deadly cancer-inducing radon gas. This means workers have to put up expensive ventilation systems just to... Uh, of course, of course, uranium's got to be green, right? And radon gas. So radon gas is a safety hazard in mining, but... Doesn't come from uranium. It's just uh, a gas that comes from various other geological deposits. It can even exist in people's homes where they have like radon detectors, anything underground. Not uranium specifically. Yeah, it's a hazard that you got to worry about in mining among among other hazardous gases, engulfment hazard, um, Things of that nature. Yeah, mining's just a dirty, dirty business. But it doesn't come from uranium directly, but it can come from actually mining uranium, just like from mining anything else. You know, not die. <laughs> Thorium's chill. You go to wake him up, he understands he's got a job to do. Goes without a fuss. And even when you do get uranium up, like the lazy bastard he is, he has much less concentration in his ore compared to thorium, so more work has to be done just to get the same amount of material. So the part about the gas, now, that really just depends on where the location of the mine is. I think what he's getting at, now I'm not a mining expert, is thorium is more likely to find in deposits that you can have like an open pit mine instead of one that's closed off. So there's less of that engulfment, um, gaseous hazard. But um, the real the real benefit of mining thorium is there's three times more of it, so you don't have to do as much mining to get the to get that resource. So it's more of just about natural abundance than anything else is why thorium's better to mine. Earth's crust also has much more thorium in total than uranium, about three times as much. Okay, so he, he gets at that. Okay, fair enough. So you got your ore, and you've extracted it. Ready for work, right? Wrong. You see, <laughs> natural uranium mainly consists of two different isotopes, uranium-235 and uranium-238. It's actually even less than that, more than, more like, ni greater than 99% of U-238 and less than 1% U-235. It kind of sucks at life, 
So uranium has to undergo enrichment to up its concentration of 235. Uranium's kind of like that kid with ADHD, right? Oh, you got him in the building, but you still got to give him his own little room and a couple Ritalin before he starts doing anything productive. That's expensive. Thorium, on the other hand, look at him. He's got his sneakers laced, glasses on. He's ready to go. But thorium doesn't, it's not ready to go. It doesn't fission by itself. Well, maybe he's going to get into that, but you need to have like plutonium or uranium or something to, to help it along, basically. Let's see if he gets into that. needed. Finally, you're ready to make some power. This part's important, kids. Pay attention. So this is where the biggest difference between uranium and thorium comes in. You see, uranium is fissile, okay. whereas thorium is fertile. This means you... So clarification, um, fissile means it will readily undergo fission. Um, uranium-235 specifically, like he showed, that very small concentration that you have to enrich, that is fissile. Other things that are fissile are plutonium-239. One general rule of thumb, not 100% accurate, but if it ends in an odd number, it's generally fissile. Um, compare that to uranium-238, which is fissionable, which it can fission under a fast neutron, which are a lot, a lot rarer, and you don't typically rely on those to sustain your nuclear reaction, but it is physically possible. Um, same thing with thorium-232, it is actually fissionable, so if you want to place them in a reactor that operates tr primarily using fast neutrons, it would work, but fertile, what it means is decay products down the chain will will fission. So it can be used to make fuel, but it does need something to help it along the way, like plutonium or... Uranium can do his job all by himself, just doing his thing all on his own. Whereas yep. thorium's kind of a cripple. He needs a little bit of someone else just to give him... Okay. He gets it. ...push he needs to start releasing energy. This might sound like a bad thing, but if you think about it, it's a lot safer. If you've got your power production process started, and shit suddenly hits the fan... How's it safer? Uranium's just gonna keep going. You can try to move them around, cool them down or whatever. But at the end of the day, this man's gonna be swinging. That's not even the... Even what the, what most people consider dangerous. Um, it's very easy to shut down a reactor. Um, reactor protection system, all control rods fully insert. Less than two seconds. It doesn't take much to shut it down. Even if they fail, uh, most reactors are designed in such a way that if the uh, temperature goes up of the reactor coolant, so they mentioned about, they talked about cooling it down. If the temperature goes up, that is a, what's known as a negative reactivity coefficient. And basically what that means is it's going to shut itself down if temperature gets up. There's an inverse relationship between temperature and reactivity reactivity being acceleration so steady state reactivity is zero you're raising power reactivity is positive lowering power reactivity is negative so this particular type of runaway reaction that's not even what you mostly worry about in in nuclear reactions so i'm not really sure how he says it's safer it's not going to be a good day for anyone. Thorium, he's only got one leg. Piss him off, he takes a swing at you. Just push him over, you're good. Please note, Sam and Al Academy does not condone pushing cripples. And that's what yeah. thorium reactors do. They allow the barely radioactive liquid thorium to drain away from its helper in the event of an accident, so there's no way for things to escalate. Okay, so he's talking about passive safety systems, and that's a real thing, and... Yes, thorium reactors can be designed this way, but so can reactors that use uranium. Uh, small modular reactors, for instance, um, it will just shut itself down if it overheats, like, like I mentioned earlier. So this is really more of a function of reactor design than uranium versus thorium. Thorium is so new, though, um, if we were to... Deployed at scale, we're talking brand new reactor designs, which the newer reactor designs for uranium would also have passive safety systems, so we're kind of at a wash here in terms of safety. Both of them are highly safe, and I would, I would like to run either or both type of reactor.
much safer. But while the process for thorium is better, most of the time people care more about the results. Well, it just so happens thorium is pimping in that regard as well. CERN estimates that one ton of thorium is capable of producing as much energy as 200 tons of uranium. That's a lot. To compare... Now he's talking natural uranium, not, not enriched uranium. It's also equivalent to 3.5 million tons of coal. And that goes to show you just how much better nuclear power in both situations is just so much better than coal or other fossil plants. But let's talk about byproducts. Thorium, being as pure as it is compared even to enriched uranium, produces about a hundred times less nuclear waste. So whereas we might not have as many X-Men, that also means much less work has to be done to dispose of the material. Additionally, it's... So the thorium by itself would, but you're still using that little bit of plutonium as well, or, or uranium in some case, but that, that is one advantage, is less, uh, less fission products by volume. It's very difficult to make a nuclear weapon out of thorium, since it can't do much on its own. The only thing that's really weaponizable about the thorium plutonium. plants is that little bit of helper material I talked about earlier. But overall, that's a pretty minuscule amount. That means we- So while plutonium amount is smaller, um, plutonium is a lot more energy dense than uranium and can be used in its relatively small quantity to make a nuclear weapon compared to uranium, which you'd have to enrich. So he talked about we talked about enrichment earlier. You'd only have to go to two to four percent for a reactor. You'd have to go upwards of ninety percent if you're going to use uranium to make a nuclear weapon. But plutonium, you don't need nearly as much material. So while it's less volume, there is that increased risk of making making a weapon using uh, plutonium. But I'm one of those people that think the risk of proliferation is largely overblown. It's that same reason why we don't recycle our fuel in the United States because of the byproducts of recycling. Because we could get a lot more fuel utilization out of our uranium if we just recycled our fuel. So, but there's just that concern about proliferation, at least within the U.S. I feel a lot better about plopping these plants down in places like Iran. So kids, you heard it here first. Thorium is the future. Powerful, clean, reliable, and if things go wrong at the end of the day, you can still kick its ass. <laughs> so what do you think? Do you think thorium is the future? What I'd like to think is that it would be some combination of thorium and uranium. I don't they don't necessarily need to be mutually exclusive because uranium is still um in terms of readily accessible resources we already have mines for it. We already have operating experience using it. We can use thorium as well. I'd like to see, um, especially if we build a lot more nuclear power plants, um, the demand for thorium will, will increase to the point that we would start building these plants, learning how to use them better. I, I would love to see more uranium and thorium plants. One other advantage that... He mentioned, but he didn't mention earlier of, thor of thorium was he talked about the fewer amount of fission products. Fission products are what generate that decay heat that would eventually lead to fuel damage, fuel melting, overheating if um, you completely lost cooling. So with thorium, there would be less of that. Anyways, I'd like to see both of them. Let me know what you thought, if you're Team Thorium, Team Uranium, or Team both. Let's crank out these nuclear power plants as fast as we can and as safely as we can. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.